Fiber supplements are a great starting point to increase the fiber in your diet, but ultimately it's best to get it directly through food. But some foods have a lot of GI side effects. And so in this video, we're gonna discuss some of the best foods that are good fiber sources while being easy on your gut. Four food groups deliver a good amount of fiber in your diet, and those are vegetables, legumes, or beans, as well as fruit and grains. And while these are each good sources of fiber, other factors of these foods will impact your GI tract. For example, tomatoes are a good source of fiber, but they can cause a lot of reflux symptoms. But aside from that, a common theme of all of these is that you won't digest all of the food, and those portions that reach your colon will be digested by colonic bacteria, and that's where some of the other side effects come into play. Now, it's also a good thing that not all of this food is digested because we have a symbiotic relationship with the healthy bacteria in our colon. Some of the byproducts of their metabolism actually becomes the food for our colon cells. And the right kind of bacteria, they make byproducts that have been shown in studies to decrease inflammation and improve the junction between colon cells. They're like little neighbors giving each other a big hug to make sure that you don't have a leaky gut. Fiber supplements can confer some of these benefits but a whole food is an even better source because there's lots of other nutritional benefits to eating good foods. They have other antioxidant properties, rich in minerals and nutrients, vitamins that you require for daily living. Vegetables are a particularly excellent source of those four food groups that I introduced because they are not particularly calorie dense and that makes them the cornerstone of a nutrient rich but calorie light diet. As you add fiber rich foods to your diet, plan to phase out some of the supplements that you use. You don't wanna have too much fiber because that's gonna actually give you a lot of bloating. And I wouldn't want you to back off of those rich foods and keep on the supplements that you actually now have the opportunity to decrease. Look for food sources that balance soluble and insoluble fiber, but don't just leave it at that. Really this idea of soluble and insoluble fiber, important, but it's not everything about fiber. Different foods will individually affect you in different ways and that can vary from person to person. And so just because you hear that one food is great for someone, don't expect that it's gonna be the same for you, and that's okay. Additionally, don't assume that the fiber that you added to your diet was the reason that you had new bloating. Let's say that you made a lentil soup and that you seasoned it with garlic and onion. The fructans that are present in those vegetables could really upset your GI tract. Also pay attention to how you cook the food. Raw onions can wreak havoc on your GI tract for days, whereas a soft cooked onion can be tasty and easy for your gut. Cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and cauliflower are a great candidate to pile some fiber onto your plate, but if you eat them raw, expect to get some bloating. So rather than dipping broccoli in ranch, instead, try to boil it with some pasta. It'll break down and be very easy to eat and add a little extra texture to any sauce that you include. Other vegetables are equally great sources of fiber and deliver their own benefits of having rich antioxidants and vitamins. Take parsnips and carrots. These are relatively easy to digest bake them in the oven, and you're gonna find that they provide a lot of flavor to a roast, and they provide a lot of fiber to your diet. One root vegetable gets an undeserved bad reputation, the humble potato, shunned for its starch content, and yet it's a great source of iron and potassium. Prepared correctly, the starch in a potato actually provides a special form of starch called resistant starch. This can't be broken down by our GI tract, and so it lands in your colon in a manner similar to fiber. Resistant starch can form from potatoes when they are cooked, and then cooled. Think of a potato salad. Like fiber, resistant starch acts as a probiotic because you didn't digest it, it ultimately is available to your colon bacteria for them to work their magic. Otherwise, most of the fiber in a potato is in its peel and it's lost when a potato is prepped. So be a rebel and eat a baked potato with its skin. Fruits like pears and apples, as well as stone fruits like peaches are typically eaten with their skin and that makes them a good source of fiber. The pectin that is in the flesh is itself a good source of fiber, but these foods are high in things like fructose and sorbitol, which can cause patients with irritable bowel syndrome, a lot of bloating and diarrhea. Grapefruit and other citrus fruits may be better tolerated. And these have pectin, a great source of fiber, and this stimulates the growth of bacteria, which comprises the bulk of your stool. And like we've discussed previously, the bulkier stool you get, the easier they are ultimately for you to pass. Kiwi and passion fruit are another alternative source of fruit fiber with the additional benefit that you're gonna feel like you're on a tropical vacation. When aiming to add fiber to their diet, a lot of people wanna go big and they'll do that with lentils which provide 15 grams in a single serving. That's half of your daily goal. How convenient to just throw it all in at once. This is like going to the gym, strolling over to the bench press and trying to hit your own weight on reps on day one of a strength building routine. You are going to leave sore if not embarrassed. 
So slow down, Rocky, and add your lentils as a small side so you don't overload your GI tract. There's a dose response to the fiber that you eat and the water you consume and how large your poop is. And it's also true that larger fiber particles will bulk up your stool more than smaller ones. And cereal is a good source of large fiber particles. It's also a great way to introduce some fiber early in your day, which helps to spread out the fiber fun. Of the four groups I originally mentioned, whole grains tend to pack the most calories. And for people who have celiac disease, they really have to avoid wheat. Wheat bran can be a very effective laxative, but it causes a lot of bloating. And so there's a lot of reasons that we should be looking for some alternative grains to seek fiber. Note that bulgur and couscous do provide fiber, but these are actually wheat products. So if you have celiac disease, I want you to still stay away from these. Oatmeal provides soluble fiber, and when it's certified gluten-free, is a good option for a person with celiac disease. But an even better grain alternative may be quinoa, which is very useful for both a pasta substitute and for an oatmeal substitute. Rice is a gluten-free staple and itself a good source of fiber, especially if you substitute white rice with brown rice. This adds a few extra grams of fiber to your diet, which is the perfect amount. It's a substantial gain, but it's not so much that it's going to overload your GI tract. People often ask me, but what's the best fiber-rich food? And my answer is that none necessarily has to be in your diet. There's so much variety and each offers great nutrition. So the best one is the one that settles best with your stomach that you can incorporate into your daily life. And so get out there and explore these fiber-rich foods. Please subscribe, keep watching. Thank you and be safe.